it's the pattern, it should be just equity in the world. <laughs> Oh no, look, Andy Blood. What the hell? Now then, crew, and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now, things are progressing, be it slowly, on Tall Girl Holly's DR200. This is the donor frame. Why are you fitting another frame, I hear you say, Andy? Well, the reason for it is the frame that's currently on the bike, which is there. Very organised, aren't I? Uh, is the farm spec frame and the bike is registered as a farm motorcycle farm registration for road use which means it can only go very short distances on a public road this frame is from the trail bike and it's fully road legal it's got you know normal regio we call it it's currently on hold it doesn't look much like a motorcycle at the moment but it will be believe me very soon hopefully um, so, the plan is to fit that frame to that bike, you know, swap all the bits and pieces across. However, upon the inspection previously, there's an issue. There are some slight differences. And one of the main differences is the fact that the trail bike doesn't have a right-hand side stand. It only has a traditional left-hand side stand. And one of the main features of a farm bike is it has two side stands. And it's a kind of feature that I'd like to retain. Now, to do this, we're gonna to have to make a modification to the frame. Let me show you what I mean. So, here we've got the right-hand side of the frame. And this is the original foot peg mount, which Suzuki fits to this bike when it's new. And this is the trail bike frame, don't forget. And that pretty much mounts on like that. Now, obviously, because we want the side stand on the right-hand side, we need to use this bracket, and this also has the additional side stand pivot mount. There, look, you see? Just there. So, obviously, that peg needs to go. We can still use the bottom thread, threaded hole, because that should line up with this one. As it is, you know, it's pretty much replicated you know, on that peg there. Look, you can see the profiles all the same and stuff. So we're going to need to grind off this lug, make up a new steel tube with the right thread in it, and I've got a tap that I'm pretty sure is just the right one for that. So we can grind that off, and then we're going to need to drill the frame. Probably a hole saw is probably the best idea for that. Insert the new bit of tube with the thread, and then weld it into the right place. That's the plan. Once that's done, I can get the whole thing shot blasted and painted. So, I've been having a little rummage round and I've found a bit of mild steel. This stuff, well this actually was an old stub axle look. There's still a little bit of thread left on there. But we can get what we need out of this. And there's still enough to mount it properly in the lathe, which is the important thing. <sighs> I also have in here... I didn't have the one I needed. I had to go and buy the right tap. So that is the bolt, and it's the same bolt for both. And I'll tell you the thread size, just out of interest, because I had to find out for the tap. It is an M12 by 1.25. It's a fine metric thread. And that is the tab. Look at that. And it's weird because it's the first one I've ever seen that's got tapers on the top. So I'll lead in threads at the top and at the start down the bottom. And I'm told that's to aid removal of swarf, and in the very rare instance, you need to tap a hole backwards. Not that I ever had had to do that, but you know, one day maybe. So we've got a brand new tap, and since I was feeling flush, I thought I'd get the right size drill bit as well, which is a 10.8 millimeter. That's what they've sold me, so that should be the right one, because they're very good chaps. And I also promised them a bit of a shout out, not that they gave any discount, it's just that they do a great job. And the company in question that supply this stuff is, um, well, there you go, look, Trade Tools. Can you see that okay? You can, look at that, Trade Tools, and they're based in Auckland. Where the hell are they? Uh, Penrose, there you are, look, in Penrose, Auckland. So, 
Thank you very much, chaps. Really appreciate all your help and uh, super speedy service because I was against the clock that day. Did me a great job. So, first thing I think is to get the, the lug ground off, clean up that part of the frame on the bike, get a better idea where the hole needs to be drilled. Here we go. Now, I think it'd be a great idea to fit this bolt in there and just protect that mounting surface. I don't want to be grinding that surface at all because obviously it's going to upset the purchase that the, the stand bracket has. So, given the fact that's full of shit down there, let's use our new tap and just tap that hole out and clean those threads up. Holy dogly, right, let's get this done. really busy the last couple of days. I'm really looking forward to getting this done. Oh, it feels like the right thread, that's good. Oh, 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 look at that. That is brilliant. Good job, Mr. Tap. I like that. I like that a lot. Right, let's get some more grease or something put on there. Some kind of lubricant, anyway. That's all that matters. What have we got? Fort spray grease. Cheers, Jared. Good job. <laughs> Perfect. Right, we're on with a flat disc from Flexovit. This is the Steel Inox Blue, my chosen weapon for this particular job, and not a sponsor, by the way. These are my favorite flat discs. that lug now gone let's fit this and then we can use this as the template to mark out the position of where that second hole should be we'll also have to have a little look at the um, the main frame the farm bike frame over there to make sure that the tube is uh, so that the insert with the threads is about central to the tube of the frame because you know we don't want potentially this could be slightly offset either way uh, and that's going to affect, I think, quite considerably the positioning of the stand and, of course, the positioning of the foot peg as well, which is going to be wrong if we get it in the wrong place. So maybe a measurement's called for. Here we go. Oh, we're cooking on gas already. Right, so let's get this uh, foot peg put on. Way easy, Tiger. Okay, we'll slap that on there. We'll just gingerly tighten it up. There we go. And now... We can basically, I think, take a measurement from the top edge of the foot peg mount 
to the center point of the swing arm bolt on the farm bike, adjust this to suit, lock it off, and then we can mark out our hole. Easy. Right, we've got a brand new foot peg to go on eventually, and of course, a brand new side stand as well. No expense spared. Okay, so we've got the top edge of this foot peg mount and the center point of the uh, swing arm spindle. So I'm just gonna pop the real ruler on there. And I'm gonna go with, it's not the easiest measurement in the world to be fair. Don't keep doing that, right. It's not 95. I would say it's 96 millimeters with my terrible eyesight. 96 mil, right. Back to the other frame. Right, I'm gonna remove this old foot peg from the bracket because you guys can't see what's going on. And that's just not fair, is it? Whole idea of a YouTube video is to see what's going on. There we go. Ah, sorry camera. Done. Okay, so we've got some movement. And we said, what we said, 96, didn't we? 96 millimeters from the top edge, not of this piece, but the top edge of the casting. Looks like a casting anyway. And that went across to the center of that hole there. So it's only approximate, isn't it? But it's not far off. Right, I would say. There. Where's me impact? Right, hold on, chaps, you're gonna rattle away. Okay, double check. It might take a couple of goes to get this right. It will be right, I'm sure of that. Certainly near enough. A lot better than just guessing, isn't it? So looking straight from the top, straight down, and I'm lining up the two holes in the frame for the swing arm bolt to get my alignment right on the on the ruler, and I would say that is bang on 96 millimeters. Bloody good. Okay, so we've now got a point of reference where the uh, the, the the steel tube that I'm yet to machine up needs to sit in the frame so we can mark that on with a scriber now that gives us an idea where it needs to be now obviously when we come to drill the hole with the hole saw it's not going to be particularly accurate i'm sure of that but we can mount the tube onto this bracket bolt it up and then tack weld it into place and that way it's bound to be bang on where it needs to be so these this really is only a guide as to where we need to drill the hole in the frame and don't forget somewhere in there is the remnants of that uh, stud that we ground the top off it's probably you know so it's not going to be the most the easiest thing to, to drill because it's not all tube there we go that's good enough for now so we can take that off hold on oh, should I say hold on to your fillings there we go After all that, that's what we've got. Where's my paint pen? Okay, so I'm just gonna draw around the inside just so you can see it better on the on the camera. I mean, I'll even fill it in for you. <laughs> okay, cool. Right, <laughs> we need to chuck a hole saw through there. Gee, this is gonna be interesting, isn't it? Okay, center punch in the middle will be ideal. Ah, that's near enough. There we go. Perfect. Right, let's chuck a uh, like a five mil through that first. Now this is when it's going to get real dodgy because potentially we could be drilling through half of that stud. I'm not too sure where the stud used to be anymore. It's we ground it away, and this is real high possibility of broken drill bits. Yeah. Let's not use an expensive one, eh? 
God, I could really do a tall girl holly here now to hold this frame for me because it's sort of precariously resting on the bench. Let's see how we get on. Safety squints are in position. I've gone for a much smaller drill, but this is about, I don't know, four mil, I think it is. So we're just going to start off with this one. Right, now we've got started. Let's stick a bit of uh, cutting fluid on there. Spray foam stuff from Forge. Good job, Jared. Yeah. Quite a good drill bit to use for this job because it's already bent. <laughs> And not very sharp. Back in a second. Let's see if this is going to be any better. Poor old drill bits get really neglected, unfortunately. There we go. I feel like I'm drilling a safe. Things are drastically going to go wrong any second. While I'm drilling, I'm just keep trying to keep the drill parallel to the uh, the other hole. So that's why it may look a bit like I'm drilling at a slight angle on the camera, but in reality, it's parallel to that one. Oh, look at that! Perfect. Okay, we'll go through again. I think actually, no, there's no point because. That's a blind hole, and there's a tube on the other side, so we couldn't even get into weld if we wanted to. So that's far enough, basically. So the next job is to go through with a five, I think. And at some point, we're going to find that stud, aren't we? Less is more. Just taking it really easy. I don't want to snap the drill bit off in here. You know what? I think that needs a sharp one too. Time drill sharpening. No edit in there. Right. Bit more spray, I think. Oh, that's better. Good job. Okay, well, better go and find a hole saw. So, I think what we'll do is we'll mimic the same size, or let's get it as near as we can to this one here. Pretty sure that's what we're on the, on the other. Maybe we should go look at the other frame. Let's do that. Let's go back down to the farm bike and take a look and see what they've done.
Very unplanned this video, can you tell? Ooh, that one's a bit tight, isn't it? Nasty. Just thread lock, it's alright, it hasn't crushed threaded. Ah, as I thought, this one is nowhere near as big a diameter because there's not a lot of tube left. Okay, so we'll just zero that. There we go. Do a little measure. And 18.33. Okay, well, we can make the outside diameter of that when we machine it up about that. So let's go and find a hole saw that's somewhere near. Right, I did recently purchase a hole saw set just before lockdown earlier in the year, and this is by, not a particularly unique name, is it? Hole Maker. Uh, Regis trademark as well. Precision Cutting Tools. Uh, I have used them quite a few times. Bloody good. Definitely recommend these. Right, let's take a look and see what we've got. I've done a lot of cutting with some of these. You'll see some big thick steel and lots of lots and repeat cuts as well and they've done extremely well now what did we say 18.33 well oh, there's a 19 that's probably our best option isn't it really brand new as well right let's use that one 19 mil and we'll need a small auger won't we <laughs> i get called an ogre by my kids not an auger right oh hole maker perfect right i reckon that'll do the trick let's cut that frame out Jeez, trying to work around a camera and drill a hole and breathe. It's not easy being a bloke. There we go. Right, where's some more spray? Beautiful. Right. It's always hard to get these things started sometimes. Now remember there's a peg in there somewhere and the, I'm assuming the peg went through the frame. It might, might have just been surface welded, I don't know, but uh, we'll find out. I remember when we were staring photo Don't forget the way you look me in the eyes And I keep you in my heart my heart is where you are I still think of you I want you coming back I remember when we were staring at a photo Don't forget the way you look me in the eyes And I keep you in my heart And my heart is where you are I still think of you I want you coming back Call me when you want Maybe I can take it on my Oh, nearly through, look. Down there. but it's not touching the other side of the frame it's just slow getting there that's because we're going down the side of the tube now don't forget the way you look me in the eyes and i keep you in my heart and my heart is where you are I still think Ta -da! fantastic good job hole maker very pleased with that not a sponsor by the way do like them probably one of the best hole saws i've ever bought right We've got lots of swarf. Where's my brush? Oh, I reckon that came out pretty well. What we should do now is get rid of all that, all those uh, drilling bits as well, because they'll just sit in the frame and rust, won't they? Let's see if we can get rid of all those. Oh, so good. <laughs> there is a bit of rust in there already, actually. Uh. 
Oh, it's getting there. Right, I'll clean that out anyway. You, do. you don't need to watch me clear that out, do you? Oh. Right, that's that bit done. Fantastic. Right, get rid of that. Get rid of that. So we'll tell that I'll blaze it up like I normally do. I make a terrible mess on making these videos. So, plan of attack now is we've drilled the hole in the frame. We know where it needs to be within sort of half a mil or so. Next job is to machine up. This is the fun bit. We get to go on the lathe. Uh, we need to machine up a little tubey thing, which is about 18 and a half mil OD. Uh, let, well, let's say 18 mil OD, and then we've got a little bit of jiggle room with that hole. So 18 mil OD, and we've got to drill the inside 10.8, and then tap it. What was it? 12.125. Oh, sorry, yes, 12. Sorry, 1.25. So M12 by 1.25 is our thread size and pitch metric, obviously, uh, being English and stuff. Uh, and this is a Japanese bike, clearly. So uh, let's get on the lathe, get this machined up. I think we'll chuck that bit in the chuck and we'll machine that bit down, I think. Because that's already got a hole. It's already got a hole down there. So it'll be nice and quick to machine up. I don't mind machining the outside a bit more. That's quick. And we don't have to mess around drilling too much. So, right, waffle, waffle to the lathe. Right, said Fred. Okay, so we're going to use this end of this bit that I found kicking around. So we'll chuck that in there. Nice. And this is my old, what is it, a Boxford? My old Boxford lathe made in Halifax, England. Bloody good, I'll tell you. It does an excellent job. Right, let's knock that down to 18 mil first off. Now you're all going to laugh at me because I've only got the Ben Broke, the other um, bit holder. So we, I've just got used to machining on this side now, which is fair enough. Okay, green for go. And we'll do a bit of that. No chuck key, that's good. Cool. I think it's a bit blunt. Like everything around here. Oh, that's a big chunk. probably far enough, we don't need to go too far because it's not going to be that long. <laughs> I think I might slow the lathe down a bit. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Oh, let's see if that's any better. Looks a little bit more sedate, doesn't it? Look at the finish. Right, oh, we're not too far off. Eight, uh, twenty point eight eight, and we want eighteen. So, better take it steady for now. I might just spin, spin him round and try and get a nicer finish. That's pretty, pretty knackered to be honest. It's going to be really hot too. God damn. Now, it's at this point in time you don't want to drop the screw, Andy. Right, didn't drop the screw. Did drop the bit. Bollocks. Where did you go? Where did you go? You in there? You are. Right. Okay, so. 
that one looks nice and shiny let's use that high risk of dropping the screw again you know when your eyesight's so shit you can't see anything anymore especially small stuff there we go right motors action here we go back in action I don't even use the, the gauges on this lathe anymore, they're all okay. 20 point what we've got two, so we've still got another mil to go off either side pretty much. So a one mil cut would be ideal. Too much for one pass there. Right, we're not there yet, but we're getting close. I mean, it's not like it has to be that accurate to be fair because it's just going to get welded in anyway but what have we got i'm trying to i was going to measure it for the camera like that but that's not the right way of doing it it's supposed to do it like this and we've got oh, 18.6 so 0.3 of a mil either side that's not a lot one I'll just double check yeah near enough 18.1 so we've got 0.05 of a mil of each side that's like a I'm gonna speed it up again so we get a nice nice clean finish Seventeen point nine four. <laughs> That's near enough. Okay, next job. I think we're going to drill the hole and tap, and then once that's done, we'll chuck it back in the lathe again, and we'll pass it off. That's the plan, Stan. So we'll get rid of this. Yeah, that'll work. Right, drill bit. Dum 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 dum. Where did I put the drill bit? There we are. Look. Right. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. Okay. Now we can go straight in with this, I reckon. Judging by what's already in there. I think I did that as well, actually, a while ago. Yeah, I know it's the wrong. Everything's worn out. It's probably the wrong chuck key, chuck key anyway for this one. Uh, uh. Uh, there we go. Oh, slow down. Give me this slower speed again, don't we? that that'll do the trick okay grommet I'm so used to cutting that direction now. Right. Right, just a bit more. 
minutes ago. You know, when you're doing machining work and you forget to press record, it doesn't go well because you can't redo something. And that's why most of the drilling wasn't done to camera. My sincere apologies, I've got a really good shot lined up for you. And then I thought I pressed record and clearly hadn't done. So I had to redo a bit more because it was such a good shot. It had to be in the video. Right, drill bit is finished with. Let's get rid of that. Sticking back in his little box, look. I can't do anything to camera, honestly. Right, there we go. Now, we need the tap. Okay, now don't panic, all right? Don't panic at all. Where's my autofocus gone? There he is, right. I'm not gonna turn the lathe on. I'm just gonna use the lathe to start the tap to get it all lined up, so we get it bang on. I'm not turning the lathe on. If you see me go for the start button, shout stop, because it's not intended. Okay. Just clamp that off again. Oh, God, it's really bad. I really need to get a new chuck. It's no good. I can see blood about to escape. Hang on, just bear with me. Oh God, that's all going swimmingly wrong. Makes some more space, I think. Oh, there we go. Right, that works better. Okay, one last attempt, attempt at tweaking this up. Oh yeah, mother. Come on, you can do it. Gonna let the blood out shortly. Okay. Are we recording? Yeah, we obviously recorded that bit, didn't we, Andy? Right, okay, so a bit of bit of spray on there again. And we're just gonna offer that in and start to turn the, the chuck. And I'm just applying a small amount of force, just basically pushing it down the down the runway, down the bed, to get it to start. And you can see it's bitten now because it's of course it's slipping. <laughs> it needs to be tighter. I'm gonna go and buy a new chuck. I am I promise to try that. And it was a group my old metalwork teacher taught me about this. Baz, his name was. Obviously, we had better chucks at school. Yeah, unfortunately, the poor chap has passed away now. Oh no, look! Andy Blood. What the hell? Just goes to show. Okay. One more, one more. It needs to be nice and tight. One more. There we go. <laughs> you probably won't see any of that on the channel. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's all going well. Apart from the loss of blood, we're doing just fine. <laughs> Always happens to me. So we get this, you know, three or four turns in, 
and then I'll pull it out and finish it off in the vise I think it's just to get it started it's a really easy way of if you've got a lathe it's a really easy way of um, getting everything lined up I thought the guy was a genius to be honest right that'll do we can do the rest in the bench on the bench in the vice something like that there we go undo that slide that back get rid of the blood in case mrs mechanic comes in Golly. okay right <sighs> to the vice almost there are you going to keep focus, Mr. Camera? I don't know. Okay, let's pop that in there. Now these are aluminium jaws, so they're actually pretty good for this guy job. This vice came free with a bench that I bought from an old ship, uh, shipyard that closed. Old boat building yard. Right, need some pliers. Where's the spray? Okay. Oh yes, that feels pretty good actually. Oh Basil, he used he knew what he was doing, that guy. He was a very highly strung chap though. He would it was in the era where Nothing was had to be P, probably yeah, PC, so he'd actually throw chisels and um, whiteboard markers and actually blackboard uh, rubbers as well. You know the, the wooden rubbers that you used to use to clean the blackboard. He'd throw them at you. And you had to dodge. If you didn't dodge them, <laughs> it was your fault, not his. That is going in so well. That is brilliant. And we'll just keep going all the way as far as it will go. Hopefully it will get stuck. It's going in with a real nice even resistance, which is excellent. Man, that's plenty deep enough, is that, isn't it? so good I want to keep going oh, we're getting a bit of swarf build up now let's just get that pulled out give it a clean off wow that's a long way down I think we've done enough in fact I know we've done enough look at that Don't drop it, don't drop it, don't drop it. There we go. Oh, that's good. I like that. I think that came out bloody good. Well done. <laughs> it was at a cost, wasn't it? It's all right, it'll fix. Right. It's all right, don't panic. Stop bleeding, we're all good. It's not too bad. It really isn't it's just that's just blood that's the injury there look i did take a bit of skin off this one as well but just goes to show you need you know when your chuck's worn out like that and you're using the wrong chuck key things quickly go wrong it doesn't do the job it's supposed to do it kept slipping i couldn't get it tight enough i started to get annoyed i was also filming at the time which adds to the stress levels so andy when you're editing this go on the internet and order yourself a nice new shiny Jacobs, because I like Jacobs, Chuck with an, an accompanying Chuck key. In fact, order two because you stole that one off one of the pillar drills and now the pillar drill hasn't got one either. So you need two and two Chuck keys. Okay, now here we are, all done, pretty good. Go on, focus. You, well, you've already seen it, but you know, I'd just like to show you again. Pretty good, eh? So we now need to know how much 
how deep to cut this, how, you know, how long a piece is going to fit in. So I think what we do is we bolt on the, uh, the foot peg bracket again, just slew it to one side a bit and take a depth measurement into the tube. Sure, if we need to adjust it, you know, and, and take a bit more off, we can do and chuck it back in the lathe and just, just, you know, face the end of it basically and we should be all good. But as an initial length, we can do it that way around. So to the bike frame. Are you ready? Here we go. Right said Fred, let's get that pop back on. Hey guys, it's Tall Girl Holly here. Now's the time to grab your anti-mechanic mug. You can find that on the Zazzle website, just up the top here. Once you do, you can take a selfie with it and send it to anti-mechanic at live.co.uk. That'll throw you in the drawer to win some really cool stuff, including forge gear, ting tools, and the anti-mechanic personalized jacket. Draw will be drawn on December 2020. Signing off, Tall Girl Holly. Now we can measure the depth. See how long this thing needs to be. So down to the bottom of the tube and to the top of the mount, the outside bit where the bolt head goes, we've got 30.84. There's the focus log, 30.84, brilliant. Okay, now we just need to deduct the thickness of the bracket because obviously it'll sit on the underside and of course the tube is curved and underneath so it's the, this insert's not going to go all the way to the bottom of the tube so there'll be a little bit more to take off from that so the thickness of that is 5.25 so we'll say five and a half and it was say 30 before so uh, 25 if we cut that tube 25 mil long we won't be far off right back to the lathe no more blood hopefully chuck that in there <clears throat> give it a crank up set focus I always seem to forget set focus right so 25 from the end is about oh look at that wow okay so we'll just get it cut off against that shoulder Things always happen for a reason, don't they? Right, that should work. Mm, I don't think we need quite so much hanging out. Because that always causes a bit of vibration and things tend to go a bit, a bit awry with these, when you're parting off with these tools. Let's try that. always somebody cutting the grass always right free to spin press the fire button and we need it towards me there we go
most likely going to happen is this will fire off and go behind the lathe. But I've got to move the lathe to get it out. So hopefully that will happen. plan comes together. <laughs> I hope that's not copyrighted. I've been saying it all my life. Okay, where did he go? There he is, look, probably quite warm. Very hot in fact. Right, it's just gonna face those two ends off. Gee, bloody lawnmowers, honestly. Right, finish with that. Don't need that anymore. We'll chuck that in there. Burn our fingers a little bit. There we go. Okay. Yeah. The joys of using the wrong bit. That'll do. Right. I'm just going to just get rid of that, uh, that bit of swarf that's in there and give it a bit of a lead. <laughs> Bear with me. Let's flick it around, do the other side. Oh, we're on this side now. Let's go and see if that fits. It's probably a little bit too long still. But we'll soon find out, won't we? Jeez, autofocus. Right. Back to the bike. Well, the frame. It's not really a bike yet, is it? Mm, can we get it in there? We can. Just look at that. So we'll drop that in there. Oh, yes. Still quite a bit to take off, to be fair. Let's have a little measure up. So. Judging by that, let's just wind that back down again. There we go. Underside to the top. Oh, look at a seven mil to come off. Holy crap. So, if I bevel the end here, it'll drop further down and then we'll redo that measurement. I don't want to take seven mil off this. I want to keep as much thread depth as possible. Jeez, come on camera, what are you doing? Yeah, I want to keep as much thread depth as I possibly can. So I'm just going to basically chamfer the end of this so it actually goes auto focus, that'll work. There we go. So it'll drop further into the tube and then we'll take another measurement and then do the final face off to get the right length. Oh, wrong way, <laughs> donkey. No, this isn't the right way of doing it, but it's quick because I'm already set up for this. Right, that'll do. Should give us a bit, a bit more depth, hopefully. That's the plan. Right. Okie dokie. Right, we'll pop that back in there again. Oh, you see, we're not far off now. Look at that. It's made a hell of a difference. Well, I chromatis has about three mil. 
Right, so we'll pop him in there, look. And then, undo this. Stick that round to there. Oh, look at that, looks pretty good. Whiz that back up again. And it should just move a little bit. Describer. He says, no, that's pretty well clamped. Is there a gap? Hmm. What I want to know, if I can move the frame around, keep it in the shot for you, is, is there a gap down here? Or is it sat flush? And I think there's a little tiny gap, to be honest. I think we need a bit more off. I think we do. Definitely a gap. Right. I'll machine that off, and then we'll crack on. <laughs> I've taken quite a bit off, actually. It's a bit shorter than it was earlier on. So I'll pop that in there. Slide that round. Buzz it up. Now, we're not bang in the right position at the moment, but I want to make sure we've got a little bit of movement. Yes, we have. That's cool. So that guarantees that this one now is sat properly on its mount. And then we can put, take the whole thing off, wind a bolt into that, offer the whole thing in one piece, adjust the bracket, tighten this one up, and then we can do some spot welds on that tube that we've made with the threads in it. That sounds easy, doesn't it? Right, let's do that. Cool. Right, so we know that this is a nice, good bolt. It's a good bolt, this one. No problems with the threads, so we'll just whiz that down there. There we go. Oh, God. This getting a disaster. I might need some clumpy things. Oh, look at that. Bloody good. Okay, so we'll pop that in there. We'll get another bolt, which is this one here, which looks pretty good. Pop him in there. And we'll do that one up. Yep, we've got a bit, bit of adjustment on it, so we can get our little ruler, which fell on the floor. Went to escape off the lathe. Now, there we go, look, that's better. So, from the centre point of there to the top of this mount needs to be, was it 96, wasn't it? Now, of course, it's only... Oh, camera's in the way. Sorry, crew. It's going to move you across a little bit. I need my line of sight. Nothing like being trying to be accurate with this job. Yeah, that works. We're there. So it's on its extremity, 96. Yep, that's in the center of those holes. Perfect. Okay, so just gotta apply a little bit of pressure on that and we can spot weld it in place. Time for the MIG. Well, that was an anti-climax, wasn't it? Okay, let's get this buzzed out. That's one. Two. Excellent, and that's where it needs to be. So to stop any splattery stuff going down this one, we'll pop a bolt in. And I think I'll just chuck that in like that. Don't want to knack of the threads about to cut such nice ones. Right, I'm just going to weld all the way around. Then we're about done. You guys need to get back a bit because there's no way I'm risking my S20 this close to the welding.
pretty good, if I may say so myself. Time for a close-up. Oh, it's not too bad. We've got a little tiny blow, or well, not a blowhole, it's like a little pop just there. Look. I try and keep the camera to focus still. Just there. So I'm gonna re-weld over the top of that. Sort that out. That'll do the trick, won't it? We'll come around this side. Focus, focus, focus. Great stuff. Right. Let's get that fixed. There's no way I could leave it like that. That would, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. Jeez, these are hot. Where's me brush? That'll do grommet. Just a couple of little welding splatters to take off the top, and then she'll sit nice and flush on there. Where are we? There's one. And there's the other one. Close your eyes. I think that's pretty good. Right, test fits. Oh, what's that on there, look? Is that just dirt? Oh, we've got a splatter there as well. Jeez, Andy, what's going on? Holy shit, this is a sharp chisel. <laughs> What's it planning on that? Oh well, it'll get sorted out in the cleanup. Damn. Right, said Fred, last test fit. Here we go. Still hot, still hot, still hot, still hot. Right, that one in there. That one, that's really hot. Jeez. That one in there. Now, this one may not go all the way down yet. I don't know. Let's find out. Well, I was expecting to cut some off the end of that. Brilliant! It's done! I've got to shot blast it now. Well, there you go, crew. Oh, get rid of those. Safety third. Job done. Went pretty well. Didn't lose... Which one was it? Didn't lose too much blood. And, um, well, that new tap worked extremely well too. I think the job, it was bang on. Everything lined up very very happy and we are now one step closer to getting this dr200 farm bike basically built up for tall girl holly she can go and play around um, where is it woodhill just around just outside auckland up in the forest you can get on the bike and go tear ass around there till her heart's content and i'll be chasing her around with the gopro no doubt waiting waiting for her to fall off hopefully she won't but probably will uh, now, if you enjoyed this video, why not click on the subscribe button? You'll see a little gear icon turn up. Click on that, and then you can tick the box and turn on notifications. Now, friends at YouTube will send you an email as and when I upload any new videos. And that way, you won't miss any of this epic DR200 series. And there's quite a few videos in it. Some tall girl Holly uh, is in the workshop with me helping. Other videos I'm doing on my own. She can't come down there for every video, chaps. It's just the way she, way it is. She's really, really busy. Now, you'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through any of those portals. And also, you can flick me an email if you like. Hopefully, it won't end up in the spam folder. Uh, and I'll do my best to reply. I can't guarantee I'll always get back to you. And I certainly can't guarantee I'll always have an answer for you. 
uh, if it's a diagnostic problem that you're having with your car or your motorcycle, I'll do my best to help. But, you know, I don't know everything. <laughs> Far from it, to be fair. Now, obviously, there's going to be a few of you going to have comments about how I use the lathe. It's... Yeah. I'm not an engineer when it comes to machine work. I'm not a tool maker as such. Um, I just have a mechanic and I have a lathe and it makes things. Well, I make things on it. And as you can see, it did the job. It worked. It was good enough for what I need. And the tolerances were, you know, sure, if I spend more time, I can be a lot more accurate. For this particular job, it didn't require that much accuracy. It really didn't. It was, you know, for what we did, pretty easy. Uh, and this may well be the only DR200 farm spec bike that's allowed to go any distance on a public road. How cool is that? Now, if uh, if you want to support the channel, you can do that through uh, Patreon. Uh, you can become a patron to the channel, Patreon. And uh, there's all sorts of history about the channel on there. Um, some profiles on the tour girls and how the channel came to be because it's been around now for almost five years yeah, I can't believe it either to be honest. I feel ten years older for sure since I first posted that very first video Go and check it out. I might even put you a link. It's different to say the least uh, Also, if you want to donate you can do that through uh, PayPal and again the email address is down the bottom It's andymechanic at live.co.uk Lastly, and I haven't got one here because I'm really badly organized, uh, you can go on to Zazzle. There's a Zazzle website, which is the official Andy Mechanic merch website. Drop onto that, and uh, you can peruse all the various stuff that's got Andy Mechanic logos and stuff all over it. There's even a pair of leggings for your, for your tool girl, for your workshop as well. And uh, anything that you buy, you know, flick me an email through if you want with a selfie. And who knows, I might even stick it on the social media, be it on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, just to say thanks. Okay, crew, well, that's about it for me, for me today. Uh, lots more jobs to do on this DR200. Uh, and the next one is going to be shot blasting it. I'm not looking forward to that at all because there's going to be sand absolutely everywhere. But then I can paint it. And once it's painted, that's a real turning point because then I can start to put, to put the whole thing back together. And that'll be great and a lot more videos. All right, chaps and chapettes, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Cheers, over and out. And we get the up again. Oh. Ha <laughs> ha